Chapter 10 Paget smiled until it felt like her face was going to crack, and then she smiled some more. She was at Barney's with Adam, Max, and a multitude of others, waiting for the results to be announced from the mayoral race. There were even reporters there, waiting to catch her statement. It was a wonderful night with her supporters, but she would be glad when it was over. Adam checked his phone for the up-to-date status on the race. The preliminary findings should be released any moment. Finally, he saw the end results and showed them to Paget. Someone had given her a microphone, purloined from the karaoke machine, no doubt. Max helped her so that she could stand on a table and everyone could see her. Paget cleared her throat and tapped the microphone to get everyone's attention. I'd like to thank all of you for being here. Many of you were involved directly with my campaign, and maybe some of you even voted for me today. I really appreciate your support. None of this would have been possible without you. The good news is that Mayor Johns is now the former mayor of the city. There was a cheer from the crowd over this, people raising their drinks in a toast. The other news is that Tom Bailey, the late comer to the race and former councillor of the city, won the post of mayor, Paget announced. There were some boos from the crowd. Paget held up a hand and they quieted down. I have to say, I am a little relieved. I was underqualified and not ready to take on such a demanding, prestigious role as the mayor's office. I would have done everything I could to be the best mayor possible, but I am glad that someone of Mr. Bailey's experience and caliber has been elected to the position. Mr. Bailey and I agreed on a number of key issues that the city faces, including helping those who need it most, from our school children to the homeless on the streets. Mr. Bailey hopes to implement his Back to Home program, which will include more funding for shelters, counseling services, and assistance for those looking to apply to the lower income housing programs. I am very happy to support Mr. Bailey with this program. I am also very pleased to be able to focus my attention back to my schooling and my passion for broadcasting. I propose a toast to Mr. Bailey. May he be the best mayor this city has ever had. Paget raised her glass of wine and everyone cheered. She handed off the microphone and Max helped her down from the table. See, I think you would have made a great politician, Adam said. You certainly have a knack for speeches. Paget laughed. Honestly, I was terrified and forgot all my talking points. I just let my mouth run. It was great, Max's husky voice was in her ear. You are natural. She leaned happily against him. I've never been so relieved to lose. Now life can get back to normal. I think you would have made a great mayor, Dix said. I would have come and bugged you at the office every day. In fact, I would have demanded to be your assistant or something. I would have loved to have you with me, Paget smiled. You know you would have set the city on its ear. Maybe you should run for mayor next election. Dix shuddered and took a drink of her beer. No, not me. So where's the ring? Adam asked. Excuse me? Paget raised an eyebrow. What do you mean, where's the ring? She doesn't have it yet, Max said dryly. Oh, dude, I thought you were going to... Before... Adam slapped a hand across his face. I am so sorry. I decided to set a couple of things up for after the race, Max sighed. The fireworks would have worked better that way. Fireworks? Paget turned to look at Max and raised an eyebrow. Are you withholding things from me again? Whoa! Max held up his hands in surrender. It was a surprise for tonight. Surprises aren't surprises if I tell you what's going to happen before they happen. What's this about a ring? Paget tilted her head and waited. Well, I'm kind of thinking I should cancel everything and try something else, Max said. Give it up, Max, Dix laughed. She heard the word ring. No woman is going to let that word go, so you might as well go ahead with it. You knew as well? Paget looked at her friend. Yep, Dix grinned unrepentantly. Tell me, Paget narrowed her eyes at Max. We're supposed to go to the roof, he sighed and played with Paget's hair. There's champagne up there. There's a telescope up there. We're supposed to go look at the harbor, where I have a lot of boaters setting up a nice message for you. Then I was going to go down on one knee with the ring, and I'm pretty sure you'd say yes. I hope you say yes. Then there were fireworks scheduled. Really? Paget breathed. He really was the most romantic and creative man. Max shrugged. Well, the surprise is rude now. Paget leaned up and gave Max a kiss. 
Yes, I'm saying yes. Dick snorted. Paget, he didn't even ask. Then I'll fix that. Max grinned as he got down on one knee, holding Paget's hand. Paget, will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Paget nodded through her tears. People around them started cheering and clapping. She was sure a reporter got a picture, but she didn't care. Let it end up in the newspapers. Her night couldn't get much better. Max took a small ring out of his pocket and gently put it on her finger. It was delicate and understated. Paget instantly fell in love with it. Max held her in his arms and whispered in her ear, I know it's not much since we're on a budget right now, but maybe we can replace the diamond for something bigger later. Don't you dare, Paget scolded him with a smile. It's perfect. They had a wonderful night at Barney's, and many came up to the roof to watch the fireworks later. Paget and Max walked home, hand in hand, enjoying the night. She noticed that Ed was no longer on the park bench. Ed saved enough to put a deposit down on a little apartment on this place about an hour away. It's in a small town, and everything he needs is in walking distance, Max replied. He left today. I'll miss him, Paget said. I'm glad he's going to be okay. Max smiled. I got his address so we can send him cards for the holidays and maybe the occasional care package. Paget teared up and hugged Max. That's a wonderful idea. Max held her. He looked uncertainly into her eyes. Are you sure about the ring? I really do mean about getting a larger diamond later when we can afford it. I'll hide it before I let you change it, Paget warned. She gave Max a kiss. I love it and I love you. Max smiled. He really was the luckiest of men. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the epilogue of The Reverse Cinderella. This will give you a sneak peek into the next Ramsley book, Words Unspoken. Also, please subscribe to the channel to enjoy other audiobooks, helpful videos, and insights into writing. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.